So before you even write a single word of SEO content, you first need to analyze your competitors to identify strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities for differentiation. And the last thing you wanna do is create copycat content. The world does not need more of that, and plus, it doesn't work well. A better strategy is to find a unique angle for differentiation, and there are two ways to differentiate your content. First, you find a purple cow angle that's never been done before, and this is the most effective long-term technique when executed correctly. So there are many different ways to differentiate, but one of the best things you can do is you can focus on just doing better design and ultimately investing more in your content. So here's an example of a website that did how a car engine works. And the crazy thing is that they rank really well for this and they're not even, they don't even have the topic authority to really rank for this particular keyword. But because the content is so exceptional, they've acquired a lot of links and it's just, this is a perfect example of like, you can tell a lot of thought went into this and you can do these kind of animated types of assets and these can be really, really effective. So the thing that tends to perform the best when you're talking about differentiation is something that clearly required a lot of effort, a lot of time and, and likely a lot of investment as well. Okay, so when you see this, this was, this was a big project and this is just one small example of someone thinking outside of the box to ultimately attack a specific keyword. There's an example here as well from my own website and we came up with this angle just because we were looking at the top ranking results. So if we go to you know best CMS for SEO, we saw this keyword and you'll see we're here number one, but when you look at this, like before we were there, all it was was a bunch of these kind of generic, you know, CMS posts and they're all from actual CMS based websites. So what we did is we're like, all right, well, let's actually see which of these actually are the best for SEO. So we actually went and we collected a bunch of data and then we basically curated all that data into a very simple post. Because when you're thinking about not just ranking, but also thinking about how can I create something that has a lot of linkability. And this is why I intentionally use a lot of unique data, like data we had to go and collect ourselves because no one else has this data. Therefore, someone is much more likely to link to this as a reference because they haven't been able to find this anywhere else. So I'll be talking later on in, in Rankability Academy and in this SEO Content Masterclass about how you need to find Find ways to differentiate your content because you don't want to just optimize purely for NLP without thinking about how to add something different in there. The second technique for differentiating is to capitalize on your competitors' weaknesses. Sometimes finding a unique angle is challenging, so you have to differentiate in other ways. And I recommend using as many of the following techniques as possible. Okay, so here's some examples of assets that did not use necessarily like a purple cow angle. They didn't create something that was like wildly different than what exists. Existed, but it was really like in the actual meat of the content. They did a lot of things that were different that helped them differentiate. So this one here from Exploding Topics, one thing they did is they really created a even more comprehensive list than everyone else, right? So let's say someone else had, you know, 10 SAS, st SAS statistics, they had 80, okay? So this is the classic skyscraper technique from uh, Brian Dean. Ironically, this is his tool, Exploding Topics. So, you know, he's gonna deploy a very similar strategy. That's that's his uh, his method. But one thing you'll notice here with this is what they do really well is they, prior they front load the most important statistics. So that's one thing, this is good for users. But more importantly, when you look at this, they just have a lot of data, like tons of data. They've got great visuals. And you can tell this thing is not, this is not designed to be like a fun asset, right? This is not for entertainment. This is purely for being a reference type of content. This is purely for link bait, right? And this is why they're providing so much data because there's so many opportunities for people to link to this asset as a reference, right? That's what we're trying to do as a source, as a reference. So you wanna be that source, you wanna be that reference. And so you need to create as many assets in your industry so you can be, you can actually be that, okay? So this is just one small example that you should definitely model. When we look at this one, once again, not a, not like an exceptional piece of content, but what they do is they've got, once again, really, really good visuals that are unique to their brand. And you go through here and it's just a lot of good visuals and also a lot of good link intent elements in here, okay? They got data, they have visuals, and overall it just makes the asset a lot better. It makes it differentiated, okay? As opposed to people that are just using like generic images. So investing a little bit of time in the content design makes a big difference. Here's another one where once again, the content is okay, but what really makes this one stand out is they have a, a particular element in here for some sort of calculator, okay? And this adding this little asset into the content, and this is why they front-loaded it, right? Because it really makes a huge difference. They front-loaded this because this is gonna help users engage on this page. 
It's gonna make the content more comprehensive and it's overall just gonna add more positive user signals for this page, okay? And you can see they've got a bunch of little you know, tables here which are good and overall, not a crazy good asset, but they have certain elements that you should consider using to differentiate your content. So if you could add a calculator, you could add a little mini tool, like a single use case tool into your content, that's gonna help add levels uh, to your asset, okay? Here's another one from uh, NASA where you can see that they've just purely focused on readability and making the content super easy to digest, okay? This is a great one. So overall, just very simple, but simple is sometimes good, okay? And you can even see they've got some kind of, you know, interesting thing you could do here. Once again, a little intera interactive element, which once again, will add more dwell time on this page and more positive user signals. And Google is tracking those things if you're on Google Chrome. Now, going back to here, this one as well, I really like this one just because they, they basically took a, a boring concept and they really redesigned it to make it more interesting, okay? So instead of using the traditional kind of boring list view like this, they actually went and made it more of a grid view to make it more interesting, okay? And I actually think this is a really good angle as well, all right? Another one here, if you can add an infographic and it's really well designed, that can add more levels to your content as well. So you're starting to see a trend here. Like the point is we're trying to add little elements in our content that increase user engagement, make the content appear more high quality, right? Perception is everything, perception of quality and just trying to make it better for the user, trying to make it more interesting, trying to make our content more linkable. That's really what we're trying to do. So because the more, the, the better user experience you have on your page, the better your content is designed for backlink acquisition, the better it will perform in Google. And this is also another good one where they did a lot of uh, unique visuals, okay? So you can tell, like unique visuals work really, really well, okay, as you can tell. And then this one here at Healthline is one way to differentiate is just have better experts like have experts write your content that that alone will actually help you differentiate and even you know they've got some uh you know interactive visuals as well which can certainly help increase the the engagement on these page okay and then finally this one here is just be the most comprehensive okay so you you know brian dean when he originally created this asset looked at looked at all of the the posts that were talking about Google ranking factors none of them went super deep and they were super confusing so he simplified it and he turned it into this like insane list of 200 ranking factors right and of course there, there's more than probably 200 ranking factors but the point is as far as his content angle this was a very very effective strategy so always be thinking about how what can we add to our content that's going to make it very very unique and of course adding unique data, adding unique research, adding visual elements, improving the overall readability. You can tell Brian is a master of readability. This is very easy to digest, very easy to read. There's no fluff, okay? So that's another good thing is like the easier it is to read, the, the more people will consume it. And the more they consume it, the better you'll likely perform in organic search. So all of these techniques are applicable to informational and commercial keywords, but there are some nuances you'll need to consider for commercial keywords like plumber in St. Louis. Someone who is searching for a plumber is already deep into the sales cycle and your content should reflect that. And at this stage, the goal of your SEO driven page should be to turn that searcher into a lead. So every single block of content on your page should push that searcher closer to that goal. So here are some easy ways to make your local service page stand out from the competition. Okay, so although this website isn't exactly the best designed website, it is actually doing some things that I think are really effective for localized commercial content, okay? So when we think about commercial content, we're really trying to push that user to become a lead, okay? We're either become a lead or become a customer. That's what we're trying to do. So. If that content does not align with that objective, then you shouldn't have it, okay? So one thing I like that they did here is just kind of what I call turning the knife, okay? I didn't invent this idea, but it's a it's a concept in direct response where you wanna turn the knife into the problems. You wanna highlight the fears of the individual that is actually on this page. I would make this a lot more visual, okay? So I think they've hit kind of on the good points, but I would, add, I would do kind of like a left-right format. So it'd be like, here's the point, and then over here is like a visual example of that because we, we're, we're not just gonna read, we're also gonna visually see that 
that issue. You could even add video, right? You can add just other elements in this to make it even deeper and more and much better. And plus, you know, honestly, if, if this was my section here, I'd also add some data in here, like, like the frequency at which these things happen for homes in Chicago. And you have little data points in there and that, you know, can help the, the potential customer. But also, once again, we're looking for opportunities to add little elements of linkability into that asset. Okay. Here's another one that's specifically for a car accident lawyer. And you can see one thing I really like about this page is it's, it's really well designed. It's got, it's broken up a lot, but I like that they've added, you know, like I said, lots of data. Okay. So some data in here and this data is, you know, is it helpful for the person that's trying to, trying to find a car accident lawyer? Probably not, but it definitely is effective for linkability, okay, for sure. And you look at some of these things, this might be of interest for people, but really the, you know, the reason for even building this is honestly just purely for, uh, purely for SEO or link building purposes. Because at the end of the day, like what someone who is uh, trying to find a car accident lawyer, what they would really care about is how much money they're gonna get uh, so I would, you know, if this was once again, my page, I would, I would reprioritize and kind of restructure this page so that we front load the stuff that the, the actual potential client really cares about what they really want, which is like, what am I going to get out of this? Like what's in it for me? And we focus on that. And then we slowly, as that page goes down, we can start to focus on some of the elements that are more for us, which is like you know, building out, you know, creating these linkable elements that we know could potentially help us build the, the authority of this page. Okay. So this is a really good page. I just think it needs to be kind of, you know, kind of restructured, kind of resituated. Um, and that, that will help kind of fulfill the intent better. Okay. Cause at the end of the day, if you don't fulfill the intent, well, you are playing a dangerous game we got to make sure we fulfill the intent perfectly. Meaning when someone lands on this page, are they getting what they came for? That's it. It's as simple as that. If the searcher lands here, are they getting the information that they need to make an educated decision to either call this number, become a lead, uh, do more research about us? Like ideally, we would hope that we've done enough to get them to become a lead and they don't have to do additional research. That's what we're trying to do with the commercial page on the local level, all right? And finally, another one here, which is just like, why us? I love sections like this. It's a great way to add more depth to your content. It's also a way to just kind of establish your unique selling proposition for your business, okay? So add some elements of like, what are the things that make you unique? If you could add you know, three things that make you unique, you're gonna be probably doing better than most of your competition already because most people don't think about differentiation at all in business. And it is really, really critical because you don't want, like if, you're, if you don't have any differentiation, then you're always just gonna be competing on price. Right. And the root, the way that you can, you know, change that not to go off on a tangent here, but you have to have some levels of differentiation, things that make you unique, which allow you to command premium pricing for your products and your services. So I love adding little elements like this into uh, localized commercial pages. Once again, as I mentioned before with this one, more visuals, we need more visuals here. We need to show proof. We need to show social proof. We need to show case studies. We need to show stories. Like if you had a review here about the one time that, you know, you guys really helped someone who had the burst pipe and you guys, sh they showed up in a timely manner. You could have that little review here that, that basically confirms that you're timely and reliable service. Like it's, it's easy to say things, but if we have social proof that that one particular thing is true, that increases the validity of that claim. Okay. So these are things you should be thinking about when it comes to commercial content, like lots of claims here, but not a lot of proof. So add more proof and make it very specific to that one point that you're making. So once you figured out how to create something different and better than your competitors, it's time to create your SEO content brief. And I'll show you how in the next lesson.